before the biggest names like Blackbeard or Captain Kidd were solidified as some of the most famous pirates on the high seas, Henry Every was at the forefront of piracy, showing the entire world just how lucrative the ocean-based criminal escapades could be. Despite first learning the ins and outs of sailing through legal means, initially on a merchant ship and later as part of the Royal Navy, Henry Every's ambition for more than legal means could provide would propel him to mutiny and then piracy, eventually coming away with one of the largest halls in pirate history, ships full of treasure that belonged to the emperor of the Mughal Empire in India, sparking a manhunt that stretched around the globe. But unlike most other notorious pirates, Every got away with it. This is the story of the arch pirate Henry Every, and this is Learn Something New. Little is known about Henry Every before he became a pirate. It's believed he was born somewhere around Plymouth, England between 1653 and 1659. But what is known is that pretty early on, he was already taken to the open ocean, starting out as a mate on a merchant shipping vessel before joining the Royal Navy, where in 1690, he was serving as a midshipman on the HMS Kent and HMS Rupert, perhaps engaging first with piracy as they sailed for the Bahamas. But it was really only once he joined the crew of the Charles II in 1690 that he really got a taste for piracy. The Charles II was a privateering ship, funded by the Spanish crown to attack French smugglers sailing throughout the Caribbean, and it wouldn't be long before Every, as second mate on the ship, jumped at the opportunity to get a promotion. While they were docked in Spain, the crew was beginning to grow restless. They'd been stuck there for months waiting for payment from a previous excursion, but the money wasn't coming quickly. Every managed to convince the crew of the ship to mutiny against their inebriated captain. Once the captain was dealt with, the crew quickly replaced him with Every, and Every renamed their ship the Fancy, setting out to find some valuable treasures to seize. As he sailed down the coast of Africa, Captain Every began to take on every merchant vessel he came across, capturing three English merchant vessels and two Danish ships. And it wasn't just those operating above board that Every was willing to take on. As the Fancy rounded the Cape of Good Hope, he came across a French pirate whom he promptly captured before writing a letter to a authorities back in Europe, saying, I have never as yet wronged any English or Dutch, nor never intend whilst I am commander. Of course, lying about the ships he had already captured in an attempt to dissuade governments from pursuing him. And it would work for the time being, with Every continuing to sail all the way to Madagascar. It was there he would find other pirates, who would soon become his allies, eventually setting off from the island with a fleet of six pirate ships. The idea being with a bigger crew across more ships, they would be able to take on more heavily guarded merchant ships throughout the Indian Ocean, and it wouldn't take long for him to find some ships to take over. In September of 1695, he would come across one of the most lucrative finds in pirate history. As he sailed north through the Indian Ocean, nearing the Red Sea, Every came across a literal treasure ship that belonged to Aurangzeb, the Mughal Emperor of India, believed to be one of the wealthiest people in the world at the time. It was called the Ganges Sawai, and was protected with numerous cannons and its own fleet of guarding ships, many of which were also carrying treasure that would didn't fit in the hold of the Ganges Sawai. Over the course of a night, Every pursued one of these guarding ships, boarding it and taking gold and silver that would be as much as around $14 million in today's currency, though during the battle, his fleet of six ships would be reduced to just three. But that amount of money wasn't enough for the pirates, especially when the biggest score in history was right on the horizon. The pirate fleet with the Fancy's 46 cannons fired at the treasure ship, which itself also had dozens of cannons, but also a whopping 400 soldiers on board, far outnumbering Every's men. His gamble on the uncertain odds would turn into a two-hour battle, after which a cannonball took out the Ganges Sawai's main mast, and the pirates were able to board. Every's crew would win the battle, but only after taking heavy casualties. After boarding, they didn't just find hundreds of soldiers, but also women, mainly the wives of officials back in India. Most of these passengers would be killed, tortured, or sexually assaulted. As for the loot, they found enough gold, silver, gemstones, coins, spices, and silk to allow every member of Every's crew a life of luxury, with modern estimates putting the value of the seized cargo at around $95 million. This was one of the largest hauls of any pirate in history. And it's unlikely that Every had predicted the full extent of the fallout that stemmed from it, differentiating him from nearly every other pirate. After taking all of the treasure aboard, they set sail for distant waters, trying to get a world away from the Mughal Emperor who would almost certainly try to pursue the pirates once the word of the attack got back to him. 
And they weren't wrong in this regard, but they failed to realize just how many people would begin searching for the treasure in Every himself. The Emperor threatened the British government, saying they would launch an attack on British interests throughout all of India, taking British traders in the area as prisoners to show that he meant every word of his threat. With some of the traders being treated so harshly in prison that many of them died. The British government offered a £500 reward for each member of Every's pirate crew, but they also got the East India Company involved, who offered a separate bounty of £1,000 per head. Meanwhile, Every and the treasure had made it to the Caribbean, reaching New Providence Island where Every was able to bribe the governor in charge of the island, Nicholas Trott, to allow them to stow away on the island while the heat died down worldwide choosing this as an opportunity to part ways with his ship, the Fancy, at this time as well. However, as word of worsening English-Indian relations reached them, Trot told the pirates he couldn't protect them no matter how large the bribe was. And as they were packing up to leave, a group tried to take the pirate crew down. Most of them got away, with only 12 being captured, but from here, they decided to all go their separate ways, feeling certain that staying together as a 100-person crew would draw too much attention. Some of these other pirate crew members found other islands to settle on in the Caribbean. Some went to mainland America, and some even returned to Ireland and England. Over the next few years, some of these crew members were caught and hanged for their role in the heist, but the majority got away, including Every himself. He was so good at disappearing with his treasure that a historical record stops cold after his time on New Providence Island, but there was plenty of speculation about what happened to him next. Some of the times said that he started a pirate utopia on Madagascar called Libertatia. Some said he continued to sail the high seas, with multiple reports of unsubstantiated sightings occurring over the next decade. But, according to a man by the name of Captain Charles Johnson, who wrote a history book about pirates in 1724, Every returned to England with a large portion of his loot after leaving from New Providence Island. After he got back, he tried to fence his fortune, relying on the merchants who promptly swindled him out of all of it dying poor somewhere between 1696 and 1699. Regardless of what really happened, the legend of the arch pirate Every was so pervasive and notorious that when the English offered a note of amnesty for all pirates in 1698, only two were mentioned as exceptions, Every and Captain Kidd, another pirate who initially began his acts of piracy after being hired to hunt down Every. Thank you for watching Learn Something New. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Or, if you want, you can check out the channel's Patreon, linked below in the description. A very special thanks to the channel's patrons, but as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.